Suppose you want a user passwords within a website's infrastructure without any external systems to enable user login. How and where would you store them? And how would you verify a user has entered the correct inf the correct password when they lock it? Uh, just one small thing which I need to mention before we get started is that all the um, content that I present is my own and not uh, Salesforce. So uh, Salesforce is not associated with this content in any shape or form. Moment, let me just go ahead and share my screen just to show a couple of diagrams which I want to show to make things a little bit more clearer. Um, mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 All right. So basically, the question, if we rephrase it, is how to store a user's credentials within a particular website's um, infrastructure without using any external system to enable the user to log in. Right. So before diving into how to store store a user's credentials within a particular website's um, infrastructure. Let's, I think, talk a little bit about why it is best practice for, you know, using an external system to enable you to enable the user to um, log in. So when the internet came into being uh, and when, you know, uh, logging in with uh, Facebook and logging in with Google wasn't a thing, then websites typically they used to store their user's username and their user's password within their own um, database uh, system, for example. Now, this quickly led to a lot of problems, right? Because you are basically responsible for a particular user's um, information. And if somebody hacks your systems, they get complete access to a particular user, you know, uh, uh, credentials, all the things that he or she can do within your websites with those uh, like username and password. For example, if a bank is storing a particular user's, you know, uh, username and password, and if that particular username and password is hacked, that means that the hacker can potentially make any transactions within the bank, you know? So that's, uh, of course, quite um, unsafe. So now all, almost all of the websites, they use, they use something like this. And let me just show you Reddit, how does it do it? So you can continue with Google or continue with um, Apple. Uh, a lot of websites also have uh, Facebook, uh, for example, so the whole reason of doing this is that you are offloading your authentication and your authorization to some other third party where the users already have a, a user uh, account so that you do not have to store this particular username and password within your website's um, infrastructure. That means that things are much more safer at your site. But suppose that you cannot do it, right? For example, you won't see on a bank's website um, the option to log in with Google or Facebook. So a bank typically stores it because a bank does not consider even Google or Facebook safe enough to for their users to log in with those particular things. So if you have to store a particular user's credentials within a particular database within your website, typically hashing is being used. So let's see how hashing works. So hashing basically means that you scramble the password to a value which is not human readable. And hashing is done with, you know, a lot of um, hashing uh, algorithms like SHA-256 and there are several other um, algorithms like MD5, for example. Hashing means that, for example, if I give it an input, for example, if I have my password as dinosaur, the hash function is going to convert this particular string dinosaur into a value that is non-human readable and which is going to look so, something like this, that is BC64365, right? So that is, of course, not human um, so readable. Two very important things that we have in uh, uh, hashing and, you know, which every hashing algorithm supports us. Firstly, that the input value is not deductible from the output value. And secondly, no matter what input you give to a hashing algorithm, the length of the output hash is the same. So, for example, if I provide the input called dinosaur and the hash value provides you an output of the length, let's say, 20 characters, now if I give a hashing algorithm, the input dinosaurs are extinct, for example, 
still the output is going to be 20 characters itself. So a hashing function basically makes the input almost impossible to deduce from the output. That, that is the main you know, uh, function of the hash uh, function. Now, why that is important is uh, if you have seen, you know, when you're signing up to a website, for example, there are multiple requirements. Like, for example, in a password, uh, there should be a capital letter or a small letter or, you know, a special case or a number. The reason for this is that if um, you do not, you know, have these uh, considerations, most people are going to just use simple strings as their password, right? Like their dog dog's name, cat's name, or, you know, their name, their wife's name, uh, for example. And that makes the password very susceptible to being hacked by a brute force um, attack. Now, brute forces, for example, um, I know that, uh, for example, if a website does not have these considerations and a user probably uses uh, most frequently a five-character password, I can just try all the five character words in the English language to try to guess their password, right? But if a password is a combination of capital letters, small letters, special cards, numbers, etc., it makes the password harder to guess and hack. So that is the reason why you have these considerations when you're creating a password. So now that we know how hashing works, let's go forward, right? So how do websites who have to store a particular user's login storage. So, for example, the usual way it is done is that the user sign that the user signs up using a sign up form. For example, where you have your username, password, the website validates that the password meets you know all the particular uh, let's say conditions that it wants to impose. For example, capital letters, small letters, special cards, etc. Then it applies a hashing password on top of it to generate what we were what we called a hash value and then it stores the username which can be you know in an encrypted form or in its raw form and the hashed password to the database so the advantage now that we have is with the hashed password is that even if this database is hacked the hacker has access to the hacked value of the password and not the raw password itself so the hacker cannot go to the login website and actually uh, log in with the hack with the hashed value of the password, right? So this makes things much safer compared to if you are storing the raw uh, values of the password in your DB. So now that the password has been safely stored in the uh, hashed form, how do we verify a user's uh, credentials, right? So to verify a user's credentials, this is the normal flow which we have. So the user is already a user of the website, right? So his username and the hashed password is already stored in the DB here. And when the user again goes to the login form, the website enters his password. The password is again hashed using the same algorithm using which we previously hashed the password, right? And we query the DB to retrieve the hashed value which we previously used. So we are basically checking the hashed values of the password when we store, when the user initially created his or her login, and the hashed value of the password that the user has entered now when he or she is trying to log into the website. If these both values are the same, that is the hashed input password is equal to the hashed DB password which was stored, Previously, then the website grants access to that particular user. So this is the normal flow um, which is used when a website has to store a user's credentials within its particular DB. Awesome. Okay, thank you again for uh, you know taking the time and uh, you know creating creating this uh, you know the diagrams and. And whatnot. Um, how overall? How do you how do you think uh, this went? How do you think you did in the explanation and presentation? And whatnot. 
Um, I think I did quite okay. I tried to keep it a little bit more uh, high level in this because, you know, security and hashing is something that goes into a lot of depth, right? And there is right. basically no end or there is basically no learning end to, you know, uh, the uh, security field. For example, we talked about the hashing algorithms um, like MD5 and SHA. Uh, all of these algorithms have strength. Uh, and weaknesses. So, you know, when, for example, you are implementing the particular uh, type of hashing uh, mechanism in your website, it is important to know what you really want, how much of mm -hmm. performance versus uh, security posture we want to go for. So these things are quite um, important. But I think this is a good overview and a good first step to get started here. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um... I guess some feedback from me is uh, I, I think you did a really good job. I really liked how you showcased Reddit, for example, right? A very familiar flow that ever you know a lot of people are, are are used to seeing, right? The ability to log in with Google, log in with Apple, um, or you know tradition, you know, put your username and then your password and then authenticate. And I really liked how you mentioned that you know these services, these apps, these websites they're kind of putting the responsibility of security on that third party, right? Um, which when you're, you know, working as a solutions architect, this is something that's pretty, um, that that's pretty common, right? Uh, where customers, they want to make sure that, you know, if something were to happen from a security standpoint, that they're not responsible, they can it's going to kind of sound messed up, but they can have someone to blame, right? Or they can say, this wasn't on us. This was on, you know, Google because they handled the authentication, right? Um, and then you also mentioned that banks are very secure in that they don't trust a company like Google or they don't trust Apple when you log into your bank account, right? Um, and that's something that you also see a lot of the times when you're working as an SA. A customer wants to be fully, the, the term is, on-prem, right? They want to be able to manage everything and everything. So having an understanding of how to do it yourself, just as Polkit that showed, um, you know, it, it's, it's very useful because a lot of customers haven't gone to the cloud. They don't really, you know, trust third-party services as much because they're very concerned about their security. Um, but yeah, just wanted to, to, to give my feedback and thoughts there. I think you did a really great job. Um, is there anything else maybe you would have done differently or any other comments that you wanted to add here, Pulkit? Um, I think maybe something which would have been done if I had more time was to actually, you know, uh, showcase a website that does not offload its authentication and uh, authorization to a third party service. And I think what that would have helped in was storytelling because storytelling is, of course, you know, one of the most important skills that an essay should have. Right. So I really like what you said uh, that if, you know, for example, we are showing familiar things like uh, Reddit, for example, we instantly create a hook in the story. So who, whoever you are presenting to, as soon as they see Reddit, right, they say, oh, I know this one, right? So mm -hmm. this sounds really um interesting so that creating the hook and taking the story forward that is one of the most important skills an essay could have so i think maybe i would have used a little bit more familiar website and, and familiar examples uh, if i could do it again awesome well uh again thank you to everyone at home for watching the video if you like this video please make sure to give it a like uh comment any feedback or any other um you know interview questions or uh really anything else you want to see from the solution architect uh, video series and of course make sure to share uh the video with anyone who you think would find this to be useful and of course subscribe to the channel if you aren't already um again i'm all to say thank you so much for watching thanks so much for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you and of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.